which was to provide Scotland with one of her most famous Wembley victories. The game is fondly remembered as a particular triumph for the goalkeeper Jimmy Cowan of Morton, who held the Sassanax at bay in the early stages, helped of course by an impressive Scottish defence in which left-back Sammy Cox and right-back George Young were prominent, two great characters who have their own memories of that day. The main topic I have of that whole game is about three minutes from time to see on, on the scoreboard England 1, Scotland 3. And I knew from the touchline there was only minutes to go. And I said, we're home and dried, boys, so let's pick up the money tonight from the movies. <laughs> <laughs> a nice occasion to beat the, Engl the old enemy. <coughs> uh, it yeah, sure is, but uh, I remember 1949, I told, I asked John Blair, who wrote for the news at the time, I was going home to Darville. And I said, John, please let me know what the team is. So I get home to Darville, quarter to seven at night, he says, you're on the team, Sam. I said, great. And I says, uh, read me out the team, John. And he goes, Cowan, Young, Cox, Evans, Woodburn. I said, hold it a minute. What did you say? I was playing left half for the Rangers. I was not left back. <laughs> Old Jock Shaw was playing left back. And I says, how come? Well, he said, there's no left back. So stupid here had to go left back against <laughs> Sir Stanley Matthews, which at the end, it turned out pretty good. Listen the attack. Old-timer Stanley Matthews is having a lean day. Two defenders mark him non-stop and Billy Steele is there to help them out. Scotland are gaining the upper hand when suddenly it happens. Aitken throws in. Steele sends the ball forward to Riley. The Hibernian man centres and Mason flicks it in. One down, England starts the second half badly shaken. Only Mortensen and Milburn, number nine, here sweeping through the Scottish defence, live up to their reputations. But they can do nothing against a cat like Jimmy Cowan. It's only to tap it in. Heroes everyone, the Scots play the game of their lives. Cool and confident, they show superb ball control. None better than Willie Waddle, number seven. The wily Glasgow Ranger has England defenders running in circles and with Jimmy Mason number eight forms a forceful right wing. Only a desperate tackle stops Mason here. It's Waddle again. What a winger. What a joy to watch. A beautiful centre and Riley heads goal number three. Sends over a lovely centre. Mortensen shoots, and Milburn's foot sends the ball into the net. A consolation goal indeed, for Scotland's triumph is complete. Another man we must give mention to was uh, a, a team that's now defunct, unfortunately, but Jimmy Mason of uh, A great wee player, terrific wee player, and a great wee man. Mm -hmm. I, was, uh, I was really heartbroken when I heard he had died, really. He was a great wee player. Mm -hmm. It took me, uh, <coughs> have a say about two seasons to get Wee Jimmy even mentioned for a Scottish team. And I had been playing against them regularly, those Rangers. And Wee Jimmy didn't only play his game, he played about another three players' games when he was playing for the Lanark. And that was the kind of boy I wanted into the Scottish team. And uh, he, uh, as we used to say, Sam and I used to say, he used to lace out the ball before he passed it to Waddle, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he, he could feed the big deedle. Mm -hmm. You know, and he was something else. When the big deedle got going, he was something else. Mm -hmm. The left back. Jack Howe. Jack Howe. I yeah. think he's still looking for him, Sam. He was, he was still... He showed, he showed the wee uh, <laughs> Cockburn that was playing left half. He showed the wee Cockburn, come and tackle him, come and tackle him. And wee Cockburn says, the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> Now, talking, talking of wingers, you were both playing against very famous names that day. Sammy, you had the Wizard of the Dribble, Stanley Matthews, as mm -hmm. your immediate oh, opponent. Yeah. Um, how did you find him? Well, <clears throat> about three or four years before that, uh, I was playing for the British Army against the RAF at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea's ground, as you know. And uh, that was my first go, Stan. And I got a, a good England what he's up to. Stan always moved the ball in and he would move out to the wing. Doesn't matter a damn, he would never go inside. He always had to get back to the wing. So I had a, a wee bit of experience playing at uh, 
Stamford Bridge. Mm -hmm. so many people said that Tom Finney was an even better all-round player in the sense that he was much more a finisher well, than Stanley I, Matthews was, and he was your opponent that I day. agree with that entirely. Uh, if I were to take, and I've asked, been asked many times, if I were to take the choice of the two, it'd be Tom Finney for me. So any in the years that, that I can uh, go back to my time, when I've been, I was there 47, 49, 51, 53, and then 55, and the only time I lost at Wembley was 19. In 57, as you see, I was dropped in 55. Didn't play that year. That's the year we went to uh, Canada and America. You got dropped. <laughs> <laughs> you got dropped. I got dropped in that yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. I never lost at Wembley, so. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think it's lost its glamour then? I think that you two have. I take it it was a good crowd of players as well. And oh. uh, you behaved yourselves at all times. Yes. Always. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>